one one of the dilemmas that some media organizations are are, are facing now is okay uh, we have to think of our of our own uh, what our uh, ourselves no but should we report this mm -hmm. so it becomes an ethical dilemma and because they're thinking of uh, of uh, the possible of what can happen to them because of the example of Rappler, for example, no Rappler is uh, has been accused of libel, cyber libel. It's been accused of being foreign owned. It's been accused of all sorts of things, and and so on. So they're thinking, okay, should we continue reporting what's really going on? Uh, shouldn't we think about ourselves? And also, because of the political economy of the Philippine mass media, uh, some of them are thinking of their, of their economic and political interests. Mm -hmm. Okay, should we, I mean, shouldn't we be thinking of what can happen mm -hmm. to us if we are shut down or we, if we are attacked and so on? And uh, so that, that creates an ethical dilemma. Mm -hmm. And some have decided in favor of uh, protecting themselves. Mm -hmm. no? So they say, okay, we'll be careful. And well, you can't blame people for that. No? I mean, okay, there are some media organizations that are saying, okay, this can happen to us, and if it happens to us, then uh, then this means that what? That we will all lose our jobs, mm -hmm. and the owners will lose so much money, and so on and so forth. No? So let's be careful. No? So actually, you can see that in in some of the in some of the media organizations, it's evident in uh, in a, in one broadsheet uh, that used to be so. That used to be uh, very truthful in its reporting, but it's getting a little scared. And you see that also in some of the networks, no? Okay. But as far as uh, as far as the uh, as far as the the broadsheets in 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 Manila are concerned, actually there's only one that's that in the op-ed pages is still very critical. And uh, the others are, you know, very careful. Uh, and, and, and there are others that are outrightly uh, uh, defending and committed to uh, defending the, the present regime. So, uh, now, as far as, as these as this last types are concerned, mm -hmm. I think, okay, you can say they're unethical. That's mm -hmm. it. They're unethical and they're unprofessional. Mm -hmm. Because okay, uh, one one newspaper I'm thinking of, for example, will put in its headline uh, opinion. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's supposed to be a news report, but mm -hmm. it's opinion. Uh, okay, Trillanes uh, is going. Uh, Trillanes doomed, for example. I mean, that's opinion. No? I mean, uh, I mean, a news report is supposed to say in what way is he doomed? Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, for example, you say okay, so Trillanes to be tried. Maybe that's the report, right? Instead of saying trillion is doomed and that kind of thing. So you, you, you're going to have to say these are unethical mm -hmm. publications, no? Because of the choice of words. Because, mm -hmm. because uh, the, the protocol mm -hmm. is supposed to be in the news, you're not supposed to express opinion. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to express opinion in the opinion editorial pages. Yes. Okay. It doesn't mean that you, that, that you cannot provide analysis you mm -hmm. can provide analysis in the news no mm -hmm. but you're not and the analysis but the analysis must be based mm -hmm. on facts mm -hmm. and again again the, uh, there's one other problem that arises mm -hmm. here as far as uh, as far as what's happening is concerned i mean we all know that many of the officials of uh, the duterte government mm -hmm. say all sorts of things every day and mm -hmm. they will say one thing today and mm -hmm. change their minds the next day and so on and so forth and even president duterte no will say some sometimes very strange things mm -hmm. and what happens is that w one of the dilemmas here is okay should we keep reporting them mm -hmm. because journalism says okay you're supposed to report what the prominent and powerful say mm -hmm. but then does this contribute to improving the public discourse mm -hmm. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe it leads to, to disinformation mm -hmm. and, to, and to the public's misunderstanding, mm -hmm. a lot of issues. I mean, for example, okay, uh, somebody, one of the officials of the Duterte administration said, uh, the Reed Bank incident, incident lang yan, minor, it's minor, nada plisan lang. Mm -hmm. Okay. But on the other hand, uh, the ship sank. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that is established. And then uh, the Philippine Navy, no, the Coast Guard and Marina itself says, okay, 
they were rammed and they sank. Okay. So are you going to, rep to have to report that? That is one of the one of the dilemmas. And and unfortunately, much of the much of the media are deciding this dilemma in favor of reporting mm -hmm. whatever is said by the powerful. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes you have to be more discerning. I mean, uh, because of the ethical imperative mm -hmm. of truth telling, mm -hmm. you have to be more discerning about this. I mean, you have to be more careful because you're going to 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 end up misconfusing and mm -hmm. misleading the public, and so on. Um, which leads us to the other question, to the to to one other basic ethical principle. The other ba another basic ethical principle is supposed to be the principle of justice, uh, which uh, is uh, operationalized mm -hmm. by uh, presenting both sides of an issue. Okay. However, I think in the present circumstances, and I think they're, 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 all, they're saying this as well in the United States, mm -hmm. where you have Trump. Mm -hmm. Okay, in, 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 in the present circumstances, for example, when somebody says, uh, well, it may not have been the, a Chinese ship mm -hmm. that sunk the, the Filipino fishing mm -hmm. boat. Should you report that? Mm -hmm. Because fair, the fairness principle says report both sides. Mm -hmm. But I think uh, that in this, in, that in some instances you have to be more discerning, and you have to be to 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 you have to make a choice. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have to point, you have to 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 consider the fact that this one side may be completely wrong. Mm -hmm. So what's the point of reporting it? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like it's like. Uh, uh, we all know there is a, a, a society called the Flat Earth Society. They believe the Earth is flat. Okay. So, uh, I mean, are you going to say, okay, uh, well, the, a, a, the view from the, uh, from the satellite orbiting the Earth is that the, uh, it's a sphere and so on and, uh, and so on. However, the Flat Earth Society believes it's flat. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can say that, right? I mean, so there are certain... One, one, of the, one of the concerns now is that the principle of fairness says provide space as well as time for both sides. Mm -hmm. But then suppose one side is so com blatantly completely wrong. No? Mm -hmm. So I think the developing consensus is that no, you don't have to report mm -hmm. that. Okay. So you have to say, okay, the, the, the Filipino fishing, fishing boat that was sunk by a Chinese mm -hmm. vessel. I mean, there's no other, there's no question it was a Chinese vessel. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to say, on the other hand, they say that it wasn't a Chinese vessel. I mean, uh, that, that kind of thing, mm -hmm. no? So while fairness does dictate that you present both sides, I think there must be some, some reasonable possibility mm -hmm. that, that maybe this side is right or maybe the other side is right as well. In that case, I think then you have to follow the, the fairness principle, mm -hmm. right? So that's... Uh, that's among the, the, the ethical Dilemma. dilemmas mm -hmm. that are arising. Of course, there are also ethical dilemmas in the, in the internet age. Yes, For yes. example, um, speed has become mm -hmm. a primary yeah. value as far as, as far as disseminating mm -hmm. news is concerned because of the internet. So what is, what is happening is that uh, the old media of print and broadcasting are, uh, have a tendency to, to sacrifice speed for sometimes for accuracy and for fairness. Mm -hmm. So I think that's, uh, that's, uh, that's one of the emerging dilemmas. And I think that that has to be resolved in favor of accuracy mm -hmm. and fairness. Because truth telling is so fundamental. Mm -hmm. Well, in, uh, there, there's another, there's another uh, uh, ethical dilemma that, mm -hmm. that is so evident today. I mean, uh, that's conflict of interest. Yes. Uh -huh. When, let us say, a media practitioner, uh, well, it has, it, it's connected with corrupt corruption. No? I mean, when a media practitioner, for example, is in the pay of, uh, of a particular political and economic interest, I mean, uh, what arises is a conflict of interest between his personal interest, mm -hmm. because he's being paid, and the interest of the public to get accurate mm -hmm. and fair information. No? Uh, but at the same time, the, the individual who, who is in that situation loses his independence as well, because you cannot report what you see 
is really happening, you have to think of your patron, mm -hmm. what your patron will say. Mm -hmm. So that's another, another dilemma that is arising. And one, one of the indications of this dilemma, for example, is that is, uh, is the case of, uh, you know, that 60 million contract yes. mm -hmm. uh, between uh, a broadcaster, a government broadcaster, no? and, uh, and uh, a government agency which was headed by his sister. Mm -hmm. That that's a conflict of interest no? because uh, because what happens? You're supposed to be reporting on public matters, mm -hmm. but then you're uh, you have an interest in uh, in uh, in uh, providing the government narrative. Mm -hmm. okay. So or or at the same time, there are journalists who have who have now got who, have, who now have a government post. I think uh, Mr. Tulfo, Ramon Tulfo, is now a special envoy to China, no? And Mr. Tulfo writes a column as at the same time, although no longer in the Inquirer, but, I th but is it in the Manila Times? I think it's in the Manila Times. And, uh, and, and he was the one who said, uh, in order to justify the presence of uh, so many Chinese workers in the Philippines, he said, Filipino workers are indolent, are lazy. And uh, what is that? I mean, in the first place, that's not really very accurate mm -hmm. because Filipino workers are uh, in demand all over the world. Mm -hmm. <laughs> For example, I mean, they practically built Dubai. And of course, we have workers all over the world, nannies and domestics uh, and construction workers and sailors and so on and so forth. And then, uh, and uh, of course, what, what uh, the conflict of interest that arises there is the right of the people to get accurate information, no? and you're protecting uh, what what the government that hired you uh, is saying. So you have uh, you have that other dilemma. So you have you have dilemma uh, in, in the internet age. You have uh, the dilemma over speed versus accuracy. Then you have conflicts of interest, which is which is a long long standing problem. Also, you have problems of corruption, which affect independence and, and so on. Because independence is also a major mm -hmm. ethical principle. The journalist must be independent, mm -hmm. meaning he must be free of encumbrances that will prevent him from reporting what is mm -hmm. correct and what is accurate and what is in the public interest. And then uh, there is also the need for journalists to be compassionate. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and sometimes journalists forget that. Uh, one one classic uh, classic example is okay. Uh, oh, one uh, one case I remember, which we which we reported in the Center for Media Freedom Responsibility magazine at the time, was the case of a news team from one of the TV networks. They arrived at a place where uh, there was supposed to have been a shooting incident between carjackers and the police. And then they arrive there, uh, as usual, they are late. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. In many cases, media people arrive late anyway. <laughs> so they arrive late, and then, uh, and then they say, what happened here? OK, well, uh, the policeman says, uh, there's this fellow that we caught in, uh, in the shootout. He's there in the back of our car. And then they, they go to the back of the, of the police vehicle, and then they see this, uh, this fellow all bleeding and so on, and bleeding out. Uh, and so on, and he's wounded, and so on, and and uh, and the news team, and the the head of the news team. Of course, there's the cameraman. The head of the news team now points a, a mic at him and says, uh, mm -hmm. "Okay, what's the what's what's unethical about that? What's unethical about that is that in the first place, this fellow is dying. I mean, the first thing, the the the, the, the ethical dilemma is getting the news mm -hmm. and being humane." Mm -hmm. <laughs> What should prevail at that point? Yeah. And what should prevail this I there is being humane. I mean, you don't know if the fellow is really a criminal mm -hmm. in the first place. And even if he is a criminal, he has, he's entitled, yeah. he has certain rights. Mm -hmm. I mean, in fact, compassion says uh, even criminals mm -hmm. are, are, uh, are, are entitled to compassion mm -hmm. and humanity. So the first thing that the news team should have said was to, uh, should have done was to call the police and mm -hmm. say, hey, bring this man to the hospital. Mm -hmm. And then later on get, mm -hmm try to get the informa the news no but sometimes media organis media people just sacrifice everything else mm -hmm. just to get the news mm -hmm. and so 
Is that a real dilemma? As far as I'm concerned, I don't think it should be a real mm -hmm. a dilemma. Mm -hmm. I mean, humaneness should prevail in, in, in that particular, in those particular, mm -hmm. in those cases. Now, of course, humaneness and compassion also also involves what? I mean, okay, you arrive, but uh, you know there are a lot of killings, okay? Mm -hmm. So uh, you arrive, but uh, the scene of a killing, and mm -hmm. you photograph the killing, and, mm -hmm. and, and the person is half undressed, and so on, mm -hmm. and, uh, and then you print it. Mm -hmm. I mean that also has a bearing on the ne on the need for humaneness mm -hmm. and compassion because even the dead mm -hmm. require some respect, mm -hmm. and sometimes media organizations, some of our practitioners, forget mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. and uh, and I think that's uh, those are among the the current the current mm -hmm. problems. But there are also okay another as far as getting the news at the expense mm. of everything else is mm. concerned there's also one instance in which uh, uh, one of the tulfos mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, berated the secretary of social work mm -hmm. because the secretary for s of social work said okay you make an appointment and so on and send me the questions or whatever so he called him all sorts of names and so on no? so i mean that also is unethical because because uh, in the first place in the first place you want to get the news but getting the news must be under conditions of respect for the person from the source of your news i mean okay uh, who's doing who a favor in this particular case? If you are an interviewer and you approach an interviewee, who's doing who a favor? The interviewee is doing you a favor. And if the interviewee says, okay, I want to meet, uh, let's meet, um, President uh, Ramos used mm -hmm. to say this, to do this. If you ask for an interview with then President Ramos, uh, sometimes he would say, I'm going to be jogging at 4 a.m. at the cultural center mm -hmm. of the Philippines premises, so you meet me at 5. Mm -hmm. And what are you going to say? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the middle of the night for me. I mean, mm -hmm. <laughs> I haven't woken up yet. I mean, you can't say that. Mm -hmm. no. I mean, because you're supposed to be uh, it's supposed to be the convenience of the interviewee that you're. Uh, so you have to say, yeah, of course, I'm going there. No, and, and I think some sometimes some of our uh, some of our practitioners forget that. Mm -hmm. So again, that's one. That's one dilemma. Mm -hmm. Okay, I want to get the news, but you know he's preventing me from getting the news because he doesn't want to talk to me or whatever. Mm -hmm. No, and so on. No. Also, uh, sometimes there are people who who also break uh, break agreements. Like, okay, uh, uh, there is a there is a practice in journalism called the, the embargo, in which they say, okay, uh, um, I'm going to talk to you, but uh, you should uh, release the report only at 12 noon tomorrow. But then some some journalists will say, hmm, eh, ako nung kabila. So okay, so I'll release it now. Now the problem with that is that the person who's who made that request may be doing so, may have made the request mm -hmm. because he could lose his job, mm -hmm. he could be endangered, mm -hmm. or he could be killed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you have to think about that. I mean, and also if you agree, then you have to to honor the agreement no? because precisely the the person uh, requesting that mm -hmm. may have a reason. Mm -hmm. Also, part of the part of the imperative of uh, of compassion and humaneness, as we all know, is not, not publishing the names of minors and of people who've been accused of mm -hmm. who've been uh, the victims of certain crimes mm -hmm. and and so on. No? And some and and well, by now I think it's fairly standard. Mm -hmm. They. Uh, the, broad, the broadcast media, the television pixelate the faces of, of certain people involved in crimes. Uh, they give them fictional names mm -hmm. and so on. And that's, that's what's ethical. No? Because you don't want people, particularly minors, mm -hmm. no? you, don't want, you don't want to say that so-and-so, 11 years old, uh, what is accused of this because that can have a bearing on his future. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to reveal the names. But but one of the things that we have to watch out for is the tendency sometimes of the media to uh, mention the address <laughs> or the names of the parents. I mean, you know, when, when that happens, then uh, mm -hmm. of course, uh, of course, again, again, there's uh, there's one problem that arises here. Uh, I mean, uh, one of the one of the other one of the possibilities is when you're talking to a source, 
and then the source says, don't mention my name because it might endanger me. Then there's a real dilemma there because uh, the, the, the demand as far as uh, sources are concerned in journalism is you identify the source. You name the source. But then the dilemma is, well, suppose it will be in danger if I name the source. No? So how do you resolve that? One, uh, one news organization, the Interpress News Service, uh, resolves that by saying, describe the source. Mm -hmm. Don't name the source, but describe the source. Because, because uh, the, 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 the practice of naming the source is meant to show the media audience mm -hmm. that you're not making it up, <laughs> mm -hmm. that you had a real source. Mm -hmm. So in order to, to show to the media audience that you're not making it up, then provide some description. Mm -hmm but not enough mm -hmm. for the source to be identified. So that's sometimes that's a difficult thing to do. But in any case, it can, it can be done. For example, let's say in a conflict situation, you interview, uh, let's say, a guerrilla. Mm -hmm. And then the guerrilla says, don't mention my name because uh, my, uh, I will be endangered. My family will be endangered. OK, so maybe you describe him. Uh, our source, uh, let's call him so and so. You give him a name. Uh, has been with, uh, with the guerrillas for uh, uh, several years, and previously he was a, a whatever, no? something that, that, can, that can enable you to provide a convincing description. Mm -hmm. So that's supposed to be second best, mm -hmm. <laughs> because, uh, because attribution, mm -hmm. naming sources, mm -hmm. requires that you name the persons, mm -hmm. the source. No? But but unfortunately, sometimes doing that can endanger persons. No? So, so that's, uh, that's one way out of that dilemma. Okay. Sir, uh, based on the cases that you have cited, it seems to me that there's a lot of judgment call on the part of the journalist mm -hmm. to make sure that he abides by the, by the code of ethics. So far, what kind of training do you give to, to students, journalism students, to make sure that you know, they don't encounter difficulties once they are in the field? And what do you think should be improved so that um, our future journalists will be a bit more critical mm -hmm. and they will be more true to, to their sworn mm -hmm. uh, profession? Well, the first thing is that uh, well, the Commission on Higher Education mandates uh, the teaching of uh, an ethics course. Mm -hmm in uh, communication and journalism, uh, journalism degree programs. Mm -hmm. um, they've separated the teaching of ethics and law. Mm -hmm. uh, there, there used to be a time when, they, when, they, when uh, some institutions offered uh, courses in both ethics and law at the same time. And the, the, the problem with that, of course, is sometimes what's ethical mm -hmm. may not be legal. Mm -hmm. And what may be illegal mm -hmm. may be ethical. Mm -hmm. So you have to, to make a distinction uh, and, and so on. In the first place, uh, ethics is not, is not uh, there are no coercive mm -hmm. uh, means of enforcing ethics. It's mm -hmm. supposed to be voluntary. Whereas law, of course, involves coercion. I mean, you can be punished no, if you don't do something. But in any case, now the Commission on Higher Education mandates that. Mm -hmm. Uh, so what happens uh, in, uh, well, at least in the University of the Philippines, mm -hmm. the University of the Philippines, there are two separate uh, ethics courses. There's an ethics course for journalism and there's an ethics course for, uh, there's an ethics course for broadcasting, film, and, and communication research. So I don't know what, well, I mean, there are di differences, no? Because, uh, because the differences in, uh, in, in the media can make a bit of difference, although the principles are the same, actually, basically. Mm. I, mean, I mean, for example, in, uh, in broadcasting, if you're a television reporter, okay, uh, you shouldn't be hysterical. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we all know that on some cases. For example, in the, in, in the case of the hostage taking in, at the Luneta, I mean, uh, some of the broadcasters were, mm. were hysterical. Eh, to report, I ought not be, and so on and so on. And the idea is not to so panic, no? okay. So, so there are certain particularities as far as the media are concerned. And then, of course, uh, of course, uh, television allows you to 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 show the site mm -hmm. of, let's say, an earthquake. Mm -hmm. Whereas in print, you have to describe. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are all those. Uh, of course, uh, this providing the description, uh, there are certain ethical standards as well. I mean, you know. 
don't emphasize the blood and gore, for example, no, and so on. No? I mean, I remember one case in which there was an airplane crash, mm -hmm. and then uh, some, broad, some of our broadsheets were talking about, oh, there were uh, body parts on the trees, and so on, blood everywhere. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and of course, there was one instance in which there was, uh, there was a body that was discovered, chopped mm -hmm. up, and then one newspaper published mm -hmm. the photograph. I mean, mm -hmm. so, uh, of course, in, in, in broadcasting, they now pixelate all of this no? and, and so on. But in any case, these the standards are, uh, are supposed to be the same. But in, 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 in uh, the teaching of, of ethics can be very problematic yes, because, yes. because let me tell you a secret. I mean, <laughs> several years back, many years back in the, in the UP College of Mass Communication, the teaching of ethics used to be, used to be done by, by priests. On the assumption that uh, that ethics had something to do with sin, okay. <laughs> I mean, of course it. <laughs> I mean, I mean, it's not that. It, it's supposed to be about what? It's supposed to be about this particular profession, mm -hmm. or if you don't want to describe journalism as a profession, mm -hmm. this particular would-be profession mm -hmm. <laughs> or developing profession mm -hmm. has certain ethical standards mm -hmm. because of what it is. Mm -hmm. so that's what it's it's supposed to be all about. Uh, it's not, uh, there's something, it has something to do with what is moral and, mm -hmm. and, and what is immoral, but, mm -hmm. but it's not a matter of sin. Mm -hmm. But in any case, so the teaching of ethics at that point was, uh, was regarded, ethics was regarded as, uh, you know, somehow related to sin. So, so there was a problem. I mean, so it's, it's a problematic thing. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that has to be done, what, what's needed actually is for the training, the, the professors themselves to be very well trained in, mm -hmm. in it. And, and ideally, uh, may, maybe this is my prejudice, my prejudice is that you have to have a combination of book learning as well as experience in the media. I think uh, a, a professor teaching ethics uh, 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 without experience in the media and basing his teaching only on uh, book learning, mm -hmm. maybe he will have some difficulty. He or she will have some difficulty in, uh, in uh, tackling certain ethical areas. Uh, for example, I know of one instance in which, uh, in which a, an investigative report generated in a class was published by a professor. And, and uh, that gave rise to questions like, to the question of, was that ethical? Because the source of the report the main source of the report protested and said, and he said, I didn't know this was going to be published. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it, it, uh, there was the question of, okay, uh, should we tell a source that, it is that, that something is going to be published? My answer to that is yes. In mm -hmm. fact, a journalist must always identify himself. Mm -hmm. the, a journalist must not say, I'm a student, uh, but but then you're intending to publish this, uh, so that so so the 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 ethical question there is: shouldn't you have informed the source that this is going to be published? So there's the question of, of deception as well. So why did that happen? I think that happened because the the particular professor was not familiar with with the ethics of of the profession and was not involved in practice. So you need, in the teaching of ethics, you need, I think, that, that kind of combination. So, so ideally, the combination I'm thinking of is somebody with a, with a doctorate in, mm -hmm. <laughs> in communication studies, but who has at the same time had, let's say, 10 years experience in, in media. So, so that's, well, the Commission on Higher Education recognizes that, in fact. Mm -hmm. no? And the Commission on Higher Education even makes certain exceptions. I mean, uh, um, uh, somebody who 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 has uh, who has been an exemplary mm -hmm. practitioner in the media can teach, mm -hmm. even without the degrees that are usually required. Mm -hmm. No, I mean, for example, if you have somebody like uh, Nick Joaquin, for example, no, who did not have a degree, mm -hmm. not one degree at all. No, so. Conrad de Quiros yes. did not, does not have a degree, no, and neither does uh, Jose Lacaba, yes. but they're exceptional practitioners. So, mm -hmm. 
they can be allowed to teach because the assumption there is that okay if you're an exceptional practitioner then you must have the capacity to evaluate your own practice and maybe to do some study on your on your own no? so so that's the assumption of the commission on higher education and i think that works in in in, in many instances no? Sir, you're part of the Center for Media Freedom and Responsibility, right? Sir, how would you assess the impact of CMFR to, to Philippine journalism? Well, I think we've had some impact, but, mm -hmm. but, but the problems are so deeply rooted mm -hmm. that they're very, very difficult to, to resolve mm -hmm. overnight. We've been around for 30 years. We'll be we're celebrating our 30th year this, this year. Although I haven't been with CMFR for 30 years. I mean, I started CMFR in 2000. But in any case, uh, there has been some impact. For example, in the reporting of elections. Mm -hmm. Because we, 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 had, we had a series of, uh, of studies on how elections were reported in the Philippines. And, uh, and we made certain recommendations. Among, among our recommendations, for example, is, okay, why don't you report the track record of candidates? If they were uh, if they were in the Senate, what bills did they introduce and so on? Mm -hmm. Maybe you need to hold debates and so on and so forth. And some of that has has been accepted by by our media organizations. And I think there's a, there's a bit more care today in uh, in uh, thinking about ethics. Mm -hmm. But the, but one of the problems uh, is that is that sometimes you are uh, there are practitioners who are aware of the ethical needs. Mm -hmm of ethical principles mm -hmm. but then <laughs> the stories they write mm -hmm. may be changed mm -hmm. <laughs> at the at the level of uh, of the desk okay. where the editors uh, you know can make changes because the editors may be thinking okay the owners won't like this okay our advertisers won't like this or on that kind of thing mm -hmm. so the political economy of the media plays a, a, a big role mm -hmm. in uh, in how the media perform so that's why I think that uh, that if you have uh, media literacy programs mm -hmm. which have been proposed, no, mm -hmm. if you have a media literacy program, I think one of the things that it must contain would should be a a module on what's the what are the interests behind mm -hmm. Philippine media, because because you have a media organization, for example, which is part of a corporation, which is part of a conglomerate rather that is involved in hotels, mm -hmm. telecommunications, uh, real estate, mm -hmm. and so on. And so if something happens that has to do with telecommunications, mm -hmm. then how, how does your major organization report it? Mm -hmm. so, you, so, so the report becomes favorable to, mm -hmm. <laughs> to the owners and so on. Mm -hmm. so, so those things, I think, have to be, have to be part of any mm -hmm. module, of any mm -hmm. uh, media literacy program. A media literacy, a media literacy program, of course, is meant to to develop among the public an awareness of the ethics and the professional standards of mm -hmm. journalism so that they will demand that uh, the media organizations observe mm -hmm. their own standards. So a media literacy program, therefore, can help uh, the media as well as uh, individual practitioners um, be more observant mm -hmm. of their own of their own standards because okay this is the market talking mm -hmm. the market is now saying do this don't do this and so on so they will say they will probably uh, they'll probably uh, well, try to do better mm -hmm. as a consequence so i think media literacy a media literacy program is really necessary okay sir one last question for our students this is the era of fake news mm -hmm. and alternative facts um how would you advise our students in discerning uh, what is actually fake news and what is truthful? Um, what is the difference between a propaganda and what is accurate reporting? How, how would they be able to discern uh, these uh, challenges in the post-truth era? Well, to distinguish between propaganda and, mm. and, and, and news. Well, in the first place, news is by definition accurate mm. and truthful. Uh, okay, that's why fake news is an oxymoron. Eh? Okay. They contradict; it's contradictory. Mm -hmm. But in any case, uh, to distinguish between news and propaganda, you have to uh, to to have some understanding of what constitutes propaganda. Mm -hmm. And there are certain propaganda techniques. Uh, for example, repe repeating a falsehood, uh -huh. uh, 
so that it begins to look like the truth. Mm -hmm. uh, providing only select selective information and forgetting and mm -hmm. forgetting the rest. Uh, uh, emphasizing, uh, emphasizing, for example, that uh, many people already believe this. Mm -hmm. You know what's known as the bandwagon. Okay, mm -hmm. many people already believe this, so you should believe this too, and so on. Mm -hmm. So they should. I think it's necessary for for students mm -hmm. to to have some some understanding of mm -hmm. what are propaganda techniques. So that's as as far as the first thing is concerned. The second, uh, the first question and was how how. How do they survive this post-truth era okay. and these alternative facts that are proliferating, for example, in the social media? Okay, social media, I mean, the downside of social mm -hmm. media is the fact that, okay, anybody can get on social yes. media and, uh, you know, share false mm -hmm. information and so on and so on. And, and uh, one of the, uh, there are efforts, uh, how, uh, there are efforts by certain organizations, I mean, uh, Facebook itself yes. is trying to, is trying to, to stop the proliferation of false information. Mm -hmm. And in the Philippines, they have designated Rappler and, mm -hmm. and Vera files mm -hmm. to fact check. Yes. So, so maybe you consult Rappler and, mm -hmm. and, and Vera files. Uh, Vera files and Rappler uh, periodically issue mm -hmm. uh, reports on what is fake news mm -hmm. and so on. For example, they say, okay, this report that says that uh, that uh, Vice President Robredo believes that the solution to the water problem is to make bigger pipes mm -hmm. <laughs> is fake. Okay, mm -hmm. so so okay, so you by consulting them, you know that. But at the same time, uh, I think uh, the, the uh, students must also be aware of the standards of journalism. Mm -hmm. If you have uh, a news report, so called, mm -hmm. that is single source. Mm -hmm and that contains opinion at the same time, then you know that, mm -hmm. that that is not the way news is supposed to be written. And I'm particularly referring to the first Matrix report that appeared in the Manila Times, which was written by Mr. Matrix. Dante Ang. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that was single source. Mm -hmm. That was just one, so there was one source that was cited, and, what was, and the source that was cited was the government yes. itself. And then at the same time, uh, there was a, there was a what? There was a, it was rather miserly in facts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and there was a lot of opinion. And so, so they just pieced together mm -hmm. all of this. So somebody, a, a student reading that must say, Teka muna, bakit naman one source lang? At saka bakit marami namang, bakit kulang naman ng facts ito? And so on, ano? So yung, let us, uh, uh, the, the student must, must, uh, must be aware that, first of all, a news report is factual. Mm -hmm. And then, the facts must come from a number of sources, mm -hmm. no? Para merong verification. Uh, the classic statement is that jo journalism is a discipline of verification. Very okay. So you have to verify, you know, one of the, one of the means. At the same time, I think, uh, I think we must, be, uh, uh, students must be very careful in sharing mm -hmm. information. I think they should they should verify first of all number one what is this site, mm -hmm. what is the track record of this site, mm -hmm. because this site has been around only since yesterday, mm -hmm. or or there's a blogger, mm -hmm. okay, how many followers does he have? I mean, uh, when did he set up this blog mm -hmm. and that kind of thing? What is his record? Mm -hmm. I mean, has he been criticized for for uh, for uh, spreading falsehood? Mm -hmm. I mean, there has to be a little, a little what, a little more care in, in sharing information mm -hmm. because information uh, because the information that you're sharing mm -hmm. may be false information, mm -hmm. and the problem is that it can lead to uh, what um, public discourse mm -hmm. that leads nowhere or that confuses people or that perpetrates mm -hmm. uh, terrible things, no. I mean, for example, uh, uh, if you if you if you were if you share information saying that okay, uh, uh, human rights don't matter because it is human lives that matter, and so on. You have to be aware that <laughs> you have to be aware that human rights are about human lives. That what it's trying to protect are human lives in the first place, and so on. No? So I think. I think those things must be established, and 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 I think it's not just students that have to be to be aware of this because one of the 
what the ironies of the present mm -hmm. age. This is supposed to be the information age. Mm -hmm. But you have an information crisis in many parts of the world. No? You, people are deluged with billions of bytes of information every day. But then uh, there are many people, even in the United States, they don't know the U.S. Constitution. Mm -hmm. In the Philippines, uh, Philipp many Filipinos don't know the Constitution either. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think it's not just students that have to be provided information and that have to be to be the the and and uh, and, uh, and given courses in media literacy mm -hmm. it's everybody i think but in this particular time when the media are so pervasive i mean there are actually there are only about seven huge media corporations mm -hmm. that dominate information and entertainment throughout the world mm -hmm. and and they provide billions of trillions of bytes every day you know so so i think i think the recipients of that of, of the information that they disseminate must be aware of what interests they represent that is where that is where uh, communication theory comes in for example okay so the students i think must be aware of the the propaganda model mm -hmm of uh, Herman Chomsky and uh, and uh, of Chomsky and Herman mm -hmm. I'm sorry did I say Herman Chomsky Noam Chomsky and Herman uh, of Herman and Chomsky you know which which uh, which says that that what that that basically information that that that's released to the media pass through five filters okay the ownership uh -huh. interest mm -hmm. advertising interest and so on and so forth. No, so so I think, I think uh, this must be part of of a communication curriculum. Mm -hmm. I mean, even at the undergraduate level. So just a follow up question. So if that's the case, do you do you sanction uh, journalists who violate the code of ethics? Well, there are no sanctions there against. There are no sanctions. Uh, I see. I mean, there have been uh, there are attempts. Uh -huh. Uh, I look at I look at the the attempt to introduce a bill that would punish the dissemination of false information as an attempt to to sanction mm -hmm. because journalists would be included there. Mm -hmm. So I disagree with that bill because mm -hmm. I don't I think that uh, that it can be used against the press freedom and yes, free expression. Uh -huh. All right, so thank you very much, sir. Um, this is a very interesting and informative uh, discussion, and I'm sure that our students learned a lot from you. So to our dear students, uh, please remember that there are certain principles that mu must be upheld no, when we talk of media ethics, uh, particularly um, truth-telling, justice, compassion, of course, confidentiality and respect for the participants. And we should also be on guard that there are also issues of corruption and sensationalism. And there's a lot of judgment call also that a journalist has to consider before he comes up or he participates in the dissemination of information. So that's about it for today. And uh, thank you very much for your cooperation and participation. Good day.